Hey guys, we're going to learn a little bit about centrifugal force, circular motion. Brief review. Um, if you recall, anytime anything is moving in a circle, it actually experiences, so, so we're moving, it's moving this way, right? If it's moving in a circular path, it experiences an inwards acceleration, which we call a centripetal acceleration. We had a formula for that, which was v squared over r. All right, now we're going to connect this idea with what we now know about forces. Excuse me, I don't want to string here. Okay, well, we're going to connect this with the idea of forces because now what we'd like to be able to talk about is maybe like what's the tension in a rope as I swing something in a vertical circle like that. Okay, all right. Now, um, if you remember this equation from like this whole unit, right? Uh, if you're talking about, okay, what is the force required to make something move in a circle? You can use this to talk about what that force is. The name of that force is centripetal force. A centripetal force is mass times centripetal acceleration. So just using F equals MA. Specifically, though, if it's a centripetal acceleration, which is V squared over R, that means a centripetal force is MV squared over R. All right, so that's a centripetal force. Now, we'll say there's a centripetal force acting, then, anytime something moves in a circle, because forces cause acceleration, and so it must be moving in a circle because there's a force causing it to accelerate into a circular. Okay, so there's your centripetal force equation. Now, let's apply this to a couple of common situations. Um, let's say you have something spinning on a turntable. This is gonna be a little bit harder to film, so you're just gonna to have to see, you see the, the disc I've got in there, right? Okay, so if I spin this turntable, this would be better if I had it actually sitting on something, but then you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to see it because of where the camera is. So there it goes, spinning around, 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 around. It's a little bit hypnotizing. Um, the reason it keeps moving in a circle as opposed to doing anything else is because there's actually a friction force which causes it to move in a circle. So things don't move in circles magically for no reason. They move in circles because there is some force making them do that, right? If you saw something spinning around my head and it were not attached to anything like a string, then you would probably accuse me of witchcraft because things don't just move in circles without there being some force causing that to happen. So the disc moves around on the turntable because there's a friction force pointing inwards that provides that centripetal force. So a centripetal force is not some extra thing that just exists. It's, some, it's a, a force which is produced by or provided by something else, such as friction, right? So if I take something and I swing it in a circle on the end of a string, the thing that's providing the centripetal force is gonna be the tension in the string. Now, this idea is nice and all, uh, but actually the way that we're gonna work out these problems usually is I'm going to use this other term, which is there are no red markers right here. I guess I'll use green. Instead of using the term centripetal force, we'll talk about the ahem, centrifugal force. It's not a different equation. It's the same thing. It's just thinking about it as being in a different direction. Centripetal is the real inwards force. So really there is a force inwards when something's moving in a circle that makes it continue to move along a circular arc. Centrifugal is sort of how you experience the force. So if you were being spun around in a circle, like on one of those awesome merry-go-rounds that you probably remember from your childhood, right? You would feel like you are being thrown outwards because that's your experience of forces, right? You always experience the force backwards of how it really is. So if you were that disc spinning around, you would feel like you were being pushed outwards due to the fact that you're spinning in a circular path. That is the 
centrifugal force. All right, now the way that you're going to use this is you're going to put it into your force diagrams. Okay, um, let's deal first with um, the case of how about swinging something in a circle. So let's say this here represents an object that you're spinning in a circle on the end of a string, right? So here's the object, here's the string, um, and then we'll actually look at its, uh, we'll look at the, uh, the forces at, in two different positions, right? The, the top and also the bottom. All right, when it's at the bottom, if I said draw the forces that are acting on this object as it spins around, uh, at this point, you know of two that you really ought to provide, right? There's tension, okay? There's gravity, because it's presumably not a massless object on the end of the string. All right, and then, really, those are actually the only two real forces that are acting on it. Okay, but we're going to add in one more. We're going to add in centrifugal force. What? All right, the reason we're going to put that in there is we're going to pretend that this is equilibrium. Um, wait a minute, I'm making this. Um, we're gonna pretend that this is equilibrium. So it's not actually really for series equilibrium, right? Really, it's accelerating inwards because of the string. Okay, but I'm gonna argue that it's equilibrium because we're gonna say, well, it stays on a circular path, right? It continues to move in a circle. It doesn't leave the circle or move closer in. So we're going to say, since it stays on the circle, that's like equilibrium. Okay, now, the reason you know that you've got to add that extra force in is because it moves in a circle. It's moving, right? It's not just hanging there. If it were just hanging there, the tension would equal the weight. But because it's in motion, right, let's say it being swung around this way, right, because it's in motion, you know, just from your own experience, that you would have to pull a lot harder on it to keep it moving in that circle than if you were just trying to hold it up. All right, and so the extra tension that you would have to provide to keep it moving in that circle is going to be based on the magnitude of that centrifugal force. All right, centrifugal force always goes out from the center of the circle. So if we were drawing the object when it was, say, there, you'd have tension in centrifugal force out. So it's always out from the center of the circle is the way that you draw it. Um, so my sum of forces equation here would look like tension minus mg minus centrifugal force equals zero. Because remember, we're arguing that it's like equilibrium because it stays moving in a circle. All right. Um, now, what would they ask you to do at this point? Maybe they would say, find the tension. Okay, and you would then be given, like, the speed. Because remember, this here is mv squared over r, right? So if you knew something like, all right, the speed is six meters per second, the mass is one kilogram, it would be a matter of plugging in numbers into m and g and mv squared over r, so they'd have to tell you how long the string is, something like that. And then you could figure out what the tension is as a result. Uh, or they, could, they love doing this, they could say, all right, the maximum tension before, before the string snaps is 50 newtons. So if the string is going to snap, if the tension is 50 newtons, there's going to be some maximum speed at which it could spin before the string is going to snap. Okay, and you could solve for that um, knowing this equation right here. Right? You could plug in and figure out what V is. All right, let's look at the top. At the top, you're going to have the same three forces, actually, but they're going to be in slightly different directions, right? So if you want to pause the video here for a minute and figure out which way the tension, the gravity, and the centrifugal force go, that would be a good choice. I'm not going to tell you you have to, but that would be a good choice. You should do it. Okay, let's draw. Gravity, always down. All right. Um, the tension would also be downwards, right? The string is pulling it into a circle, so tension. 
Um, and then centrifugal force would be upwards because it's always out from the circle. Now remember, again, I, I really feel strongly like I have to remind people of this. Really, it's a, it's, it's a fictitious force. It's based on your experience of how things moving in circles works, right? You feel like it's being pulled this way. And if you were the object being spun around in a circle, like in a spinning ride or something, you would feel like you're being pushed that way. But the reality is, these are the only two forces that are acting, but they're causing an inwards acceleration, right? And so therefore, they won't add up to zero. They would have to add up to the centrifugal force. Okay, and so then this equation would be, let me unclutter a little bit. This equation would be uh, T plus mg minus fc equals zero. Okay, so pretty similar in a lot of ways, right? Okay, but because the directions change, that would actually mean the tension would have to change as well. All right, let's look at the last type of spinning question that I want to cover in this video, and it's actually going to come back to the turntable. Okay, so actually the view that we're taking here is actually pretty, um, pretty fortuitous in some ways. You're looking at the turntable basically from the side. The reason I say this is useful for us is because if you were trying to look at it from above, right, um, the... The thing that's making it move in a circle, recall, is friction. Absent friction, it would, it would not move in a circle, right? Um, and if the coefficient of friction is like too small or something, then when I spin this fast, it, it goes flying off like that. Oh, oh my gosh, look at it go. Okay, so as long as friction is large enough, it will continue to move in that circle right there. Well, if you recall, friction is fun, which is to say that it's based on the normal force which means that you need to be able to draw gravity and the normal force. So really, you want to draw your turntable from the side so that you can show the vertical forces that are acting on the system here. So there's our turntable viewed from the side. Maybe we can take black so it's very visible. All right. Oh, there's our turntable viewed from the side. Let's say it's spinning around like so. Here's the center. Here's our coin, or whatever it may happen to be. The inwards directed force is, if you said friction, you're correct. It's friction. Friction is what makes it move in a circle. Um, that force is going to be balanced by the centrifugal force, right? Because it, again, remember we're saying it stays in a circular path, so that's like it's in equilibrium, okay? So those two forces balance, and that's how come it stays in a circle. And then you have normal force and gravity. So for the x direction, the sum of the forces would be centrifugal force minus friction equals zero, which gives you that the friction force equals the centrifugal force. Okay, which would have to be true in order for it to stay in a circle. All right? And then um, for the friction force, you'd have to um, say friction is fun, and therefore we need the equations for the y-axis, right? Some of the forces along the y-axis would be n minus mg equals zero. So that means that friction is mu mg. Our centrifugal force equation is mv squared over r. Okay, and at this point, I don't know exactly what they would ask you to solve for, right? There's, there's a, some things they could say, what's the coefficient of friction got to be in order for it to not slide? Or this is the coefficient of friction, what's the maximum speed? Or whatever, there's a, lots of different things that they could ask here, okay? So if they wanted you to find the maximum speed, Let's see, the m's cancel out, and you could say that the maximum speed would be, let's see, some algebra, mu times g 